Welcome back to Naisora's YouTube channel, your trusted source for in-depth medical tutorials. Today we are diving deep into a topic that often stumps both new and seasoned practitioners alike, starting an IV in the foot. It may sound simple on paper, but this procedure often poses unique challenges. Why is that? What are the common mistakes to avoid? How can we ensure success? Join us in this video as we unravel these questions and more, providing you with comprehensive insights and expert tips to enhance your clinical practice. And before we get started, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and never miss the future videos. Starting an IV in the foot can indeed pose a challenge, and the reasons for this are manifold. However, one of the most frequent issues encountered is due to a lack of determination during the execution phase. What does this mean exactly? Well, the process typically starts smoothly enough with the operator applying a tourniquet correctly to engorge the peripheral veins in the foot. But when it comes to actually inserting the IV catheter into the foot, a lack of swift and decisive action often results in the vein being pushed aside rather than being pierced by the catheter. This video highlights how the peripheral veins in the foot are typically larger and possess thicker walls than those in the upper extremity. This is primarily due to the hydrostatic pressure resulting from a daily activity such as walking, sitting and standing, which cause these veins of the lower extremities to dilate. In response, the body fortifies these veins under hydrostatic pressure, making them thicker and stronger than those in the other parts of the body. Additionally, the skin of the feet is typically thicker than the skin of the upper extremities, which further demands greater skill and swift execution. To puncture the skin above the vein without causing the needle to slide off the sides of the vein instead of entering its lumen. Now let's take a closer look at this video demonstrating an attempted IV insertion into the foot. You can see how the slow execution of the procedure causes the veins to roll off and complicate the intravenous cannulation process. In an ideal clinical settings, all practitioners would consistently wear gloves for infection perfection measures. However, it is worth noting that glove use may impact tactile sensitivity, which can add a layer of complexity to cannulating peripheral veins. The use of tightly fitting stellar gloves such as surgical gloves may enhance tactile sensation compared to standard gloves. However, these gloves could be cost prohibitive for some or others might find them still inhibitory, causing them to miss more veins than they typically would when not wearing gloves. While it is crucial to promote the consistent use of gloves and sterile approach at all times, it is also important to acknowledge the challenges that wearing gloves can present in actual clinical practice for some practitioners. Being realistic about these issues is an essential part of balancing the safety and effectiveness in healthcare environment. When it comes to selecting veins for the insertion of an IV catheter in the foot, vein selection plays a crucial role. Less experienced practitioners might be tempted to insert the IV into a larger, more prominent veins in the foot. Cannulating large veins in the foot with thick veins require considerably more skill and an expert approach to avoid failures. More seasoned practitioners often opt for smaller, more delicate veins that have tributaries anchoring the main vein as demonstrated in this video. This approach can provide greater stability and result in a more successful IV insertion. Let's see now how an experienced practitioner would approach the insertion of an IV into the foot. In this video, we will observe the meticulous method employed by a skilled operator as they attempt an IV insertion of the saphenous vein located just above the medial malleolus. First off, you can see how the attempt on the opposite foot has failed, but the experienced operator palpates the saphenous vein carefully to assess its position, direction, and the caliber. This initial assessment provides the operator with crucial information to guide the subsequent steps. The operator then performs a swift advancement of the needle catheter system into the saphenous vein. This quick yet very controlled insertion is essential to prevent the vein from rolling or moving, a common issue when performing an IV insertion in the foot. 
Another technique the operator employed here to combat the vein rolling involved the using of his own palm of the hand. He uses the palm of his hand to extend the foot, effectively stretching the skin and the underlying vein. This action not only stabilizes the vein, but also increases its visibility and palpability, making the insertion process smoother. While it's critical to point out the lack of gloves in this demonstration, it is important to understand that some practitioners struggle with the loss of tactile sensitivity when wearing gloves. This loss of sensitivity could potentially affect their efficiency and accuracy during a procedure. Nonetheless, maintaining proper hygiene and infection control should always be a paramount. If gloves seem to hamper the procedure, practitioners could consider disinfecting their hands thoroughly with an alcohol-based hand rub or other suitable antiseptic before starting the procedure. Remember, this isn't an ideal substitute for wearing gloves, especially in procedures with high infection risk, but it does serve as a potential alternative where gloves seem to impair the practitioner's ability to perform a procedure efficiently. And there you have it, folks, our deep dive into the complexities and techniques of successfully inserting an IV into the foot. And don't forget that practice and persistence are keys to mastering these techniques and always prioritize patient safety and comfort throughout the process. Using a little bit of a local anesthetic subcutaneously for the skin can really make this process, particularly for the lower extremity, a lot more pleasant to the patients. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our Nesora's YouTube channel for more expert tutorials and in-depth medical guides. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in the future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. Until our next video, this is Dr. Hadzik wishing you success and growth in your medical journey. Stay safe and keep learning. Until next time.